Alright, so today we'll be going through the Z-perm. So there's a couple of good algorithms for the Z-perm. Uh, the first one being the one that starts with the M prime. So I'll show that right now. So it goes like this. The other algorithm that you could use is the M2 algorithm. So it's the one that starts with an M2. And so it is shown as follows. So Z perms can be recognized as being an adjacent edge swap. So normally it's two edges that are next to each other being swapped and it's the same on the other side as well. So similar to a H perm, there's headlights on all four sides, but the only difference is that the center edge color is not the opposite color. Instead, it is always going to be an adjacent color. So the orientation that you hold the cube uh, when you start the algorithm depends on which algorithm you use. So with the M prime algorithm, the one that starts with an M prime, you want to hold one of the edges towards you and the other edge towards the right hand side. However, if you decide to use the M2 algorithm, the one that starts with an M2, then make sure to hold one edge towards you, but the other edge towards the left hand side like this. So at this stage, you're probably wondering which algorithm you should probably use. Um, in my case, I use the one that starts with the M2. However, I have used the M prime algorithm for quite a while. And to be honest, they're both quite similar. Um, the M prime algorithm is slightly shorter, but not by a lot. Um, I feel like the M2 algorithm is slightly easier to remember, especially for beginners. But um, if you already know which one you want to learn, you can maybe just learn one. But if you're not really sure, I recommend you give both a try and see which one you like better. Um, in terms of length, speed and AUF recognition, they're both pretty similar. And there's not really one that I recommend more than the other. But yeah, just give it a try and um, depends on which one you like more. I also want to mention that I use my right hand for the M moves and my left hand for the U moves. Um, so the algorithm works best when I uh, use U primes um, often instead of U's because my left hand can do U primes easier than U moves. But if you do it the other way around, so if you use your left hand for the M moves and your right hand for the U moves, then you're probably easier doing U's instead of U primes. So you can actually modify these algorithms or mirror these algorithms to have U moves instead of U primes and also the direction at which you start the algorithm also changes. So if I use the M prime algorithm, for example, usually I'd start from facing this way. But if I wanted to switch hands and switch over to U moves, you'd want to start off the other way. So the algorithm would actually look something like this. And similarly for the M2 algorithms, if you were to use your left hand for the M moves and your right hand for the U moves, once again, you'll probably find it a lot easier if you use M, uh, U moves instead of U primes. So once again, um, remember how last time we did the algorithm from this angle, if we wanted to do the, U, uh, the M2 algorithm, but if we wanted to swap hands, then we'll have to mirror the algorithm. We'll have to start facing the other edge. So in this case, it'll go something like this. So in terms of memorization, both algorithms are actually pretty similar. They're um, fairly easy to remember and they both have some pretty neat features about the algorithm that make them easy to remember. So starting with the M prime algorithm, um, obviously, as the name suggests, it starts off with an M prime um, followed by a U prime. So the first two moves should be quite easy to remember. M prime followed by U prime. Uh, and now you'll have to just remember that in the middle, there's an M2 
u prime m2 and now there's another u prime followed by m prime so similar to the first two moves just the other way around u prime followed by m prime and by this stage you can remember that it ends off with a u2 followed by m2 otherwise you can sort of match up the colors you'll notice that um, these colors match up like that with a u2 followed by an m2 and finally there's a u auf at the very end um, with this algorithm and yeah that should be it so fairly straightforward to remember and I suggest you do it quickly a few times once you get the hang of it and sooner or later it will become muscle memory and it will feel a lot easier to do. So similar to the M prime algorithm, the M2 algorithm also has some pretty neat features about it that make it quite easy to remember. So the easiest way to remember the start of this algorithm as the name suggests again it starts off with an M2 and followed by u prime and that repeats again so it goes m2 u prime and then m2 u prime again so the first four moves should be quite easy to remember um, after that you'll have to remember that there's just a single m prime following that and then this next part um, should be pretty straightforward as well it's u2 m2 then u2 so u2 m2 then another u2 and at this very last stage you can just remember that there's an m prime or once again you can match up the colors and then this algorithm has a u2 auf at the end so yeah both pretty easy to remember so if you're struggling to remember one the other one may not be easier to remember but you can give it a go um, they're both quite similar in terms of length as well depends on which one feels more natural for you when you actually do the algorithm so the most difficult part of this algorithm is probably the m moves that you have to do so m primes should be pretty straightforward um, i usually just use my middle finger to flick up the m layer like that um, after like a little bit of practice you should be quite familiar with the m prime moves now the m2 moves is a bit more difficult because i do recommend you doing a double flick for the m moves so it'll go something like this with the ring finger followed by the middle finger and because um, it's a double flick it's a lot faster than doing two single flicks however double flicks um, do take a bit more practice um, i do go over um, more in depth with double flicks in my HPerm and UPerm tutorials um, but just know that after a lot of practice your your accuracy with the double flicks will increase and as well as consistency as well and it will feel a lot more natural so yeah definitely um, practice the M2s they're really important and once you get familiar with them they will be really fast and help you a lot with these algorithms so the AUF for the Z perms are usually quite difficult to recognize because there's no really obvious color that stays still and both algorithms also have just an AUF even if you've already matched the headlights up. So the way that I re recognize AUF for this first one which is the M prime algorithm is that I look at the middle color and I just remember that the opposite color of this middle color will end up at front. So what I mean by that is we have a red edge here which means that after I do the M prime algorithm, orange will end up at the front here. So I have to do a U move to solve the cube. So it'll look something like this. So orange ends up at the front. So once again, I'll have to do a U move to solve a UF. So similar to the M prime algorithm, the M2 algorithms also have a pretty weird AUF recognition technique. Um, so instead of looking at the edge color, we're instead looking at the headlights color. And once again, we'll have to recognize that it's always the opposite color to the headlights that end up at the front. So once again, as an example, we have blue headlights here but the opposite color of blue is obviously green. So green is actually gonna be at the front here after we do this algorithm. So it'll go something like this. So as expected, green ends up at the front and so we'll have to do a U2 at the end to solve AUF. 
So as seen, the ZPerm AUFs are quite a bit more difficult to recognize compared to other PLOs. Um, honestly, I had a lot of trouble with AUF recognition for ZPerms um, when I first started as well. Um, just thinking about opposite colors just took up a lot of time and oftentimes by the time I've done the algorithm I, I still have to recognize AUF again. So um, it definitely will take quite a lot of practice to get used to recognizing the opposite colors instead of matching colors like regular PLOs. But after t a lot of time and a lot of practice it will once again become more natural just like everything else. So definitely keep it up and yeah that's about it for this tutorial. So thanks again for watching this video, I um, really appreciate everyone's support. Uh, like the video if you learnt something new, uh, please subscribe if you want to see more similar videos coming out very soon, uh, and share these videos with other people you may know who are also learning PLO or who want to learn PLO. Uh, it really helps grow the channel and I really appreciate everyone's support once again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. So similar with the M2 algorithms, the I don't know if you can hear that, but the birds are pretty loud here.